What's going on guys? It's Austin from the Second Militia. So I've been telling you guys I was going to do a review on the Glock 19 Gen 5. <clears throat> well, here it is. So I've had this gun roughly about two months now and I've been carrying it and shooting it. I've probably put close to 2200 rounds through it. Um, nothing is internally really been done to it other than the uh, connector and of course I changed out the connector with a ghost three and a half pound connector and we'll get into that here shortly but <clears throat> first I'm gonna go over a few of the specs just show y'all it is clear so the slide length is 6.85 inches um, the overall width is 1.34 but that's pertaining to with the uh, slide stops and as you can see this side don't have one I actually shaved it off because uh, just on the way I grip it it's actually a pretty decent sized slide stop as you can tell it's a bit more extended than the previous generation so whenever I would purchase it, it would ride the side stops, essentially locking it up. But, <clears throat> it is what it is. So, now that we've went over, you know, the slide width, um, height, including the magazine. So from here to here, it's going to be 5.4 inches. Um, your line of sight is, you know, 6.02 Um, I'm sorry, on the polymer, your line of sight is 6.02. Your line of sight on the steel on the top is going to be 5.98. Uh, the trigger distance is, the trigger distance is, uh, 2.76 inches. And guys, I'm getting these, uh, numbers directly off of Glock's website. That's why I'm kind of scatterbrained a little bit. Then of course, if you don't know and you're just now getting into firearms, this is a 9mm. It holds 15 plus 1. The barrel length is 4.02 inches. The weight is 21.52 ounces. But I got a little, a little different with uh, empty mag. It was 2.399. So, oh, well, it says it right there. My apologies, guys. It says without magazine 2.52. So, weight with a loaded magazine on here it says 31.04. I got mine was like 32.3. Uh, that might just be used to the you know the ammo I use. So. Alright, what all have I done to this firearm? Well, the sights that are on it came factory. Paid a little more, but I didn't feel like paying an extra $100. $120 for the sights I wanted, so I just was checking out the options and I got the night sight uh, set. So, like I said, I did shave that off just because of the way I purchased the firearm. I did do a, stipple, a clean stipple job not like on my 42 that's still clean but this one just goes into the pattern of what was originally on the texture including the back strap front, sh front strap and on the other side as well I left the Glock logo I just think it looks clean you can do a whole you can stipple the whole frame as long as you leave that logo I think it looks good so we also put reference pads I'm thinking about doing accelerator cuts on it just because I've been watching a lot of reviews on accelerator cuts and you know how much it helps you mitigate recoil and uh, find your follow up you know follow up shots a little bit quicker so the slide is done a little differently it's a lot blacker than it was in the previous generation I like it but you can definitely tell I don't know if you can see it on the camera but you can definitely tell whenever you touch the firearm because it leaves fingerprints everywhere now like I said the only thing that I have done to this is I put a three and a half pound connector and 
as crazy as it sounds, this right here with the three and a half pound connector, I get more resi I put the factory one back in for the review. So that's super simple to do. But with the three and a half pound connector, it gives you a little bit of resistance, not too much to where it's a problem, but gives you a little bit more resistance on that first pushback. Um, now the trigger pull, as you can tell, it's almost spongy. That's why I put the three and a half pound connector, because once you do that, you, you know, take up your slack, you're at the wall and it breaks. So that's kind of, kind of where I like it is, you know, you get a wall breaks and then your reset is, uh, drop this out so it don't catch reset right there and you can go back at it now the sights that are on it they got uh, their fiber optic with tritium inserts at the ends of them so they illuminate any ambient light that's in the room or maybe in the room so if you have a weapons mounted light it'll definitely you know they'll definitely glow really well but if not they glow really well in the dark anyway the reason why I didn't do an unboxing is because everybody knows what comes in a Glock box. You get a spent shell casing from the factory, cleaning rod, um, some little half ass speed loader that don't really work, three mags, and your multiple back straps and paperwork and owner's manual. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to go through my likes and dislikes. Okay. So, I do like the overall feel without the finger grooves. Now, granted, the finger grooves on the last generation did not bother me. Um, I like the trigger with the 3.5 pound connector. It makes it a little bit more crisp than spongy. I do really enjoy this uh, finish on the slide. I think it's pretty awesome. And, you know, I, I've, I've been really rough on this. And as you can tell, the finish on the sights are wearing much more than the finish on the slide like it looks brand new on the slide so <clears throat> not only that i did like the grip texture that was on it but me personally with me doing my own stippling i enjoy a good stipple job and it just it makes it that much more aggressive and not only that i like having reference points for my index finger now with that being said, you know, it's a Glock, it's reliable, it's going to shoot. Um, you know, I enjoy that this, the slide stop is a little bit bigger, so I didn't have to go out and buy an extended one. But I, you know, don't like that it is an ambidextrous one. Now, had they put the notch in here to where you could flip it on either side, that would have been totally cool with me, but... You know, they're, they're thinking out of the box, whatever. So, I shaved that down with a Dremel, as you can see, and I haven't had any problems with it. It hasn't caused the gun to malfunction, anything of that nature. They got these orange followers on them, which I actually enjoy because it makes identifying where you're at on your round count and your mag a lot easier than the previous generations. Now, just going into the list of things that I don't like. Like I said, I don't like the ambidextrous slide stop, but you know, I fix that myself. There's a situation that goes on with the factory connector. After you put, I don't know, 120 rounds through it, and this is cleaning wise. So if you put 100 clean it, the trigger is on point. You know, you got that factory mushy trigger that's pretty decent. And then with the three and a half pound connector, it's great. For me, it's great because it's a lot more crisp. So once you put about 120 rounds through it at the range, that trigger starts getting really, really uh, resistant. So your pull gets a lot heavier and a lot heavier the more and more grime gets back there by the connector and the rear assembly. So I thought it was due to the three and a half pound connector and of course I had the factory connector with me so I put that back in and it was actually worse. The pull was a lot harder for some reason. So I took it to, because of course I was at the range so 
after I finished up shooting, I went and talked to the gunsmith, Craig, and, you know, he couldn't figure out for the life of him why it was doing it. He said, you know, clean it down, just clean it up and, you know, see what happens. So, took it home, cleaned it up real well, took it back to the range the next day, Sh shot perfect, perfectly fine. This time I left the factory connector in it, and sure enough, around 120 rounds, it thickened up on me, and there was just so much resistance in the trigger. Now, I've contacted Glock. I'm waiting on a response back to see if there's something that I need to change out. I've talked to multiple people, certified Glock armors. They have no idea what the hell is going on with it. I mean, like I said, I haven't had a malfunction, but the trigger pull has been extremely difficult once not extremely, I'm not going to exaggerate it, but once you get around 120 rounds, it, it gets pretty resistant. Um, other than that, you know, the slide is, I love, it's it's a smooth shooter. It's not, you know, you, you get a, you know, a hold of some Glocks and they're all creaky when you do that. It's like, Ring! and I mean, it, it's definitely, it's a smooth, well-oiled machine. But another thing that I don't care for is the cut off in the front now it don't affect my grip at all but I wish they would have put those cutouts on the side but I understand with having a flared magwell you couldn't really put those cutoffs on the side I get it but me personally like on my 43 how I did that I'd much rather have you know those cut out on the side for stripping the mag versus having it in the front and in the back by the uh, where you would put the grip plug if you wanted one. Now, on the mag, it does have that kind of lip on it, so you can get a firm grip on it if you have to strip the mag. I mean, it, it definitely works. You just got to kind of work with your technique on that a little bit, but overall, it's it's decent and it works. And I mean, it's a Glock. It's it's not the most beautiful gun, but it does its job and it does it well. You might notice that there's not a third pin here. They went back to the two pin system instead of the three pin system. So I don't know if they're going to be doing 40 calibers in Gen 5, like on the 27, because that's originally why it was introduced. I'm not sure yet. You know, we're, we'll find out, I'm sure. But with that being said, um, the internals look more like a 43 to me personally than anything else you know you got the slide stop and on the inside it's got the spring on the right side versus the left side like on the 43 that's about the only difference but you know the trigger assembly the pins the way you take it down and press on the slide stop to get the locking block pin to come through or a trigger assembly pin to come through um, I mean, it's just like a 43. So if you have experience with a 43, you'd be able to take this down pretty easily and uh, do maintenance on it. No problem. Now, one thing that I did notice with... Alright, let's see. So, whenever you're shooting it, the recoil... I mean, it's, it's a Glock 19. It, it shoots like butter. I'm not going to sit here and criticize its recoil. But when you are shooting it, I don't know what the hell Glock had going on, and this is when I first got it. It's another dislike, though. The rear sight was off. It was off to the right, and I don't know why for the life of me, but I've looked up online, and I've seen where a few people have gotten where their rear sights are just off. I mean, just off. And, you know... For as much as you pay for the gun, you know, some people are like, oh, $500 is nothing. Some think $500 is a lot of money. I'm one of those people. So, with the amount of money that you pay for something like this, I would prefer if my sight was on correctly and already pre-aligned. Which, of course, it wasn't a big deal for me to take it to the range and align it. It's just the principle of, um, you know, Glock perfection or your rear sight was not perfect or in perfect alignment. Another thing when you know when you are shooting it, that notch right there and you know that's pretty much on any generation on the trigger 
after about three or four hundred rounds you start to develop a little blister on your trigger finger so I have a Wheaton Arms flat face coming for it and you know it's just the shoe I'm not replacing the trigger bar because you know I like to leave the internals as close to factory or stock as possible same thing on the 43 you know I got the Wheaton Arms flat face but it's on the stock Glock bar um, the only thing other than that is the three and a half pound connector and the barrel I mean that's those are the only internals that I've changed I'm not messing with any springs I'm not uh, like your striker spring I'm not gonna lighten the striker spring I just I don't mess with the internals other than like a connector trigger shoe and or a barrel but the barrel on this is it's a decent barrel man I mean it's not it's just like the Gen 4 the grooves are just a little deeper honestly um, you know it's not noticeably more accurate of course the guns are more accurate than we are but however I have to say that this is a, <clears throat> a damn good point and shoot because once you index it <clears throat> and that index is you know about where you want it on the target you're gonna hit it no problem and you know containing the follow-up shots on this and mitigating the recoil it's an awesome gun man I'm not gonna sit here and bash it those are just the things that I don't like and hell those are subjective because some of you may love getting blisters after shooting all those rounds and just some of the weird shit that goes on with this gun and of course <clears throat> there's some kinks that are gonna have to be worked through like the whole trigger thing I have no clue why it does that but I'm gonna end up figuring it out or I'm just gonna end up replacing the whole rear trigger assembly with a factory trigger assembly just to see if that changes anything or if it don't but other than that I mean it's it's a Glock amazing gun it's a Glock now I am gonna start trying to get you guys footage of me shooting the firearms so you can kinda see how they perform I mean I have footage but the editing software that I use for my videos um, is a pain in the ass and it's not really letting me upload the shooting clips so I can transition in between talking points and show you how the firearm you know shot or if there was a malfunction because I record all my you know range sessions so you can see that if the firearm does malfunction now I do have those two malfunctions of the SIG P365 on camera so if y'all want to see it I'll upload it to Instagram or something but other than that you know it's a good gun would I recommend you buying one me personally if you can find uh, you know a nice gen 4 used for 400 bucks I'd just get a gen 4 me personally you know and then people are bitching about the I don't know if you can see that but right here where they beveled the edge on the front for reholstering they didn't bevel the edge on the frame I would have never noticed that had had I not seen it pointed out on uh, YouTube but that shit don't bother me it really makes no difference and as far as cosmetics you can't even tell some people are just really picky and I mean I guess you can say I'm picky to an extent of you know I wish your sights would have your rear sight would have been in alignment but whatever but what I recommend somebody to buy it if you're just dead set on having the the latest and greatest Glock then yeah sure it's not a bad gun but you know if you're wanting something that's gonna function I'd go with a Gen 4 me personally I like the Gen 4's I like the you know how the front of them they're not beveled I like that now I do like the sleekness of this one I'm not saying I don't but me personally I would have just bought a Gen 4 but I got this one so I'm gonna keep this one now with that being said just a little fun fact those sears that you can buy and put on the the uh, rear slide plate 
to where you can turn it from semi-auto to fully auto. You can't do that on the Gen 5s. Because somewhere in there it has to be milled out for the gun to be able to accept that sear. Now with the Gen 4s it's already milled out. You know you can file your paperwork, get the sear, and you legally have a full auto sear for your Glock. But, you know, if you have no intention on trying to get one of those sears, Gen 5 is, you know, it's a good gun. So, with that being said, I will be posting a video sometime this coming up week on hopefully, I ain't going to tell you what it is, but hopefully something awesome. And I also got the TLR6 for the G43, and it is a pretty decent light. Don't like the runtime, but it's a decent light. Slash laser. Me personally, I didn't get it for the laser, I got it for the light, but, you know, whatever. But with that being said, you know, be on the lookout for those. I'll have some patches and shirts coming soon. I'm not going to give you a date or an exact time period just because I don't have an exact date or time period or I don't want to give you one and it not fall through. The issue I've been running into is I'm trying to find a supplier with the color shirts that I want that can also do the graphics that I want and everybody else is trying to recharge a ridiculous amount of money per shirt and in the end result would be me charging y'all way too much for the shirt and I'm not with that I want to get it to you as cheap as possible but yet with as much quality as possible so that kind of takes time but go on over to Instagram check our page out and uh, if Instagram brought you here I appreciate you checking out the videos